This is our Miles's documentary. G1 phase. In the G1 phase, cells become very active and start synthesizing a lot of proteins, including the enzymes and structural enzymes that are necessary for further growth. During this phase, each chromosome contains a single DNA molecule. Besides synthesizing the proteins, the cells begin transmitting and receiving signals to and from other cells. <laughs> The S phase stands for the synthesis phase. In this phase, genetic material starts being replicated. The cell's chromosomes start duplicating into two sister chromatids, similar to the process of mitotic S phase. The two sister chromatids attach to a centromere. During this phase, the chromatids will remain apart until the prophase, where they will start to condense. <laughs> The G2 phase is not of particularly distinct importance in comparison to the G2 phase in mitosis. It's instead a continuation of the G1 phase, where the cell continues its protein production and signal transmission. Near the end of the interphase, bunches of microtubules called centriole pairs start duplicating in the centrosome and become distinct. The two centriole pairs will be responsible for pulling the sister chromatids apart through the production of spindles. Meiosis 1 separates the homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes produce two haploid daughter cells. Prophase takes the longest out of the other phases. Within prophase 1, there are multiple subphases the leptotene phase, the zygotene phase, the patchetine phase, the diplotene phase and the diakinesis phase. In prophase 1, homologous chromosomes pair up with paternal chromosomes and exchange genetic information. This forms at least one crossover per chromosome. Lepitin phase. This is the main phase of prophase 1. Individual chromosomes separate and become single strands. Chromosomes line up as loops using cohesin. In the zygotene phase, homologous chromosomes become closer and have a more stable bond. The patchetine phase comes from the Greek word pachnema, meaning thick threads. This stage is where homologous recombination and crossovers are completed. In this phase, double strand breaks that occur in the lepotine phase are repaired. Chromosomes of each bivalent near the centrosome separate, but are still attached by chestema, the area where homologous chromosomes exchange DNA segments and other genetic information. Diakinesis. In this phase, a lot of observable changes occur. The nucleoli vanishes. The nuclear membrane disappears into the vesicles and me meiotic spindles begin to form. In metaphase 1, the homologous chromosome pairs are arranged into a straight line on the equator of the cell. The tetrads or bivalents are a pair of chromosomes with four chromatins with two originals and two copies. They're being pulled into the center line of the cell. Each pair of chromosomes are still relatively close to each other. However, eventually, they're going to be pulled to either side of the cell. The DNA alignment and phasing doesn't change or matter based on the parent they came from. This increases the gene variation. Each of the four chromatids has a slightly different genetic material. Every one has 23 chromosome pairs. <laughs> In anaphase 1, the spindle fibers contract and pull the homologous pairs, each with two chromatids away from each other and toward each pole of the cell. The cell elongates in preparation for division along the center. Only the cohesin from the chromosome arms is degraded, while the centromere cohesin remains untouched as it's protected by a protein called shugosin. Shugoshin prevents the sister chromatids from separating, allowing them to stay together while homologues are separated from each other.
During telophase one, the chromosomes are enclosed in nuclei. The spin of this appears in the nucleus reforms around each set of chromosomes. The cell now undergoes a process called cytokinesis that divides the cytoplasm of the original cell into two daughter cells. Each daughter cell is haploid and has only one set of chromosomes, or half the total number of chromosomes of the original cell. Meiosis II is a meiotic division of each of the haploid cells produced in meiosis I. During prophase 2, the chromosomes condense and a new set of spindle fibers form. The chromosomes begin moving towards the equator of the cell. Prophase 2 prepares the cell for a secondary meiotic division, where two haploid daughter cells form four haploid daughter cells, and each containing half of the genetic material that was previously stored in the original replicated diploid cell. This begins immediately after cytokinesis. <laughs> During metaphase 2, the central mirrors of the paired chromatids align along the equatorial plate in both cells. The cell in metaphase 2, when the chromosomes align themselves along the metaphase plate, with help from the spindle fibers. In general, metaphase is described as the condensation of chromosomes and the active movement of centrosomes. Then in anaphase 2, the chromosomes separate at the centromeres. The spindle fibers pull the separated chromosomes toward each pole of the cell. This phase describes the separation of sister chromatids of each chromosome. The separation of movement is due to the shortening of kinetic microtubules. Finally, during telophase 2, the chromosomes are enclosed in nuclear membrane. Cytokinesis follows, dividing the cytoplasm of the two cells. At the conclusion of meiosis, there are four haploid daughter cells that go on to develop into either sperm or egg cells. Before we discuss genetic mutations, we have to first define a mutation. A mutation is a permanent change in the DNA sequence. These variant mutations can affect more than one nucleotide in a strand of DNA. These genetic variants can occur due to either hereditary or non-hereditary reasons. Inherited mutations are passed down from parents due to their children. It is present throughout a person's life, and the mutation can be observed within every cell. Non-inherited mutations are usually caused by disease or other factors, such as overexposure to radiation. These are called somatic variants. Mutations usually occur because of copying mistakes made during replication, exposure to ionizing radiation, exposure to chemicals called mutagens or viral infections. Our DNA is completely randomized, meaning we inherit half of genome from each parent. These gametes are unique, which explains why your DNA is different from your parents. As we see, there are a lot of random combinations. These cells are genetically different. Daughter cells also contain half of the amount of DNA of the parent cell. They also contain half the amount of chromosomes. Thank you for watching.